Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction The DNA The search for genetic material RNA world Replication Transcription Genetic code Translation Regulation of gene expression and human genome project. DNA fingerprinting. So what do you think are we going to talk about this lesson when we say molecular basis of inheritance? So in our previous lesson, we already learned about the basics of genetics. We already saw that how the traits get inherited from one generation to another generation. We talked about the variations which come into picture due to recombinations. So we looked at the Mendel's rules for inheritance and we also looked at the Morgan's rules, the chromosomal basis of inheritance. Right. So here in this lesson, we will try to look at the process of inheritance, but at a little deeper level. So here what we are trying to see is what exactly or what is that molecule inside an organism which is responsible for this phenomenon of inheritance. So it has been found that DNA acts as the genetic material for most of the organisms. So DNA that is deoxyribonucleic acid and please remember that it is for most of the organisms that because that's because there are few exceptions like the viruses where DNA is not the genetic material rather RNA is the genetic material. Now here I am just telling you that okay DNA is the one which is responsible for all this inheritance. Now it, it did not come in the dream of any of the scientists that yes DNA is the one. Right? So a lot of research was done to find out which molecule is actually the genetic material and we will study all that. We will study that how the scientists came up with the fact that DNA is acts as the genetic material. Then we will look at that how DNA actually uh, transfers traits from one generation to the next generation. So we will see the entire process of inheritance but at a molecular level. So when we say molecular level, so DNA is a molecule. So at the level of DNA, how DNA helps in inheritance. Now as we all know that each and every living organisms do. I mean if we take our own example, so we are all made up of a large number of cells. If you closely look at the structure of a cell, you see that there is a nucleus because nucleus is that region of the cell which contains all the uh, genetic material rather. So inside the nucleus, you see a nucleolus and you see this thin thread-like structures which are called chromatin. And these chromatin later condense to form structures called chromosomes. So these are the chromosomes and on these chromosomes are located the genes. So here you can see the yellow colored structures. So they are the genes. Now each chromosome can have thousands of genes and each of those genes are for a particular trait. Maybe one gene can be for your eye color, one gene can be for your hair color, one gene for the skin color. Skin color. So that means each gene uh, points to a particular trait. And the number of chromosomes which are present inside each cell of a living organism that is fixed. For example, in case of human beings, they have a total of 46 chromosomes in each cell. That is 23 pair of homologous chromosomes are present in each cell. So the number of chromosomes are fixed, but the number of genes which are present on each chromosome, that is huge. That can be up to thousands. So now again, the number of chromosomes also vary from one species to another. For example, if you compare the number of chromosomes of a human being with a drosophila, you will see that they are different. Now, when you talk about this gene, so what exactly is this gene? 
what exactly is it made up of what is there that decides that okay this is the gene so this is nothing but it actually it is actually made up of this double stranded structure called dna and certain portion of dna correspond to a particular trait so let us suppose that this portion of dna corresponds to hair color this portion of dna corresponds to eye color this portion of dna corresponds to skin color now what do we mean when we say that okay this portion correspond to this trait that means this portion of DNA will actually help in the synthesis of proteins which which will decide the color of your eye. Similarly, this portion will help in synthesizing the proteins which will decide the color of your hair. So because it is all it, it dependent on proteins and protein synthesis in turn is dependent on DNA. Now in this lesson, this is what we are going to study that how DNA impacts protein synthesis, how protein synthesis happens from DNA. So during the first half of the lesson, we will spend most of the time understanding what is a genetic material and how was it proved that DNA acts as the genetic material because there are quite a few other molecules which are present inside our cells. There are proteins, there are carbon carbohydrates, there are lipids, there is RNA, there are DNA. So how do we know that among all these DNA is the only one that can act as the genetic material? So the entire story which we are going to talk about here is how, what, why DNA is the genetic material. What is the role of RNA? Now, if we say that in most of the organisms, it is the DNA which is the genetic material, then you might think that then we don't need an RNA. But it is not like that. Even RNA plays a very crucial role. So we have to look at the uh, role of RNA and then we have to see that how the protein synthesis is dependent on DNA or how DNA can code for protein synthesis. Now in order to understand all this, we should be very clear about the structure and function of both RNA and DNA. So some of the questions that might be there in your mind and which might get answered towards the end of this lesson are some of the questions that might come to your mind would get answered towards the end of this lesson like how DNA control traits now when we say that okay DNA is a double stranded structure which is present inside the nucleus of each of our cell so a common question that might come to your mind is how will DNA control the traits because it is present inside the cell okay that is fine but how will it control the color of our eye, the skin color, the, the type of ear which we have, the type of eyes which we have. So how is it going to control all the traits? So that's one question. The next is how is protein synthesis related to DNA? How can we say that okay DNA helps to synthesize protein or to, uh, to manufacture pro proteins but how? How is it coding for proteins? What is the role of RNA? So if we say that DNA is the uh, genetic material, so why do we have RNA? What is RNA doing here? So these are some of the very common questions which will be answered in this lesson. So I hope by now you have understood that here we are going to talk about inheritance, but we are going to talk about different things. Like we are going to talk about it at a different level altogether. Now, before we proceed with it, it is very important that we understand the structure, the role, the function of DNA and RNA appropriately so for that we will have to get some knowledge about the nucleic acids so what are nucleic acids now, as we all know nucleic acids are nothing but like we spoke about biomolecules right where we studied about proteins carbohydrates lipids nucleic acids so nucleic acid is a group of biomolecule under which we have two important nucleic acid that is DNA and RNA. So deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid. So these two nucleic acid play a very important role in the process of inheritance. So we will talk about DNA and RNA, the two important nucleic acids. So as I say, DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. 
and it is a double stranded structure. So what do we mean by double stranded? You can see there is one strand, I mean, uh, you can just imagine it like two ribbon like structure which are wrapped around each other as you can see in this picture. So one, the red ribbon, the other one is the blue ribbon and they are like wrapped around each other to form a double stranded structure. The other one is RNA or ribonucleic acid. It is a similar structure to DNA, just that it doesn't have the two strands. It just have one strand. So here you can see just two single strand of a coiled structure. So these are the two nucleic acids which we are going to talk about in detail. So now we will focus our study only on the structure of DNA and RNA. So let us start with DNA. What is DNA? As I said, it is deoxyribonucleic acid. It is a double stranded helical structure. So what do we mean by helical structure? What is a helix structure? So helix structure is a structure like this. So anything which is wrapped around each other and coiled around an axis. So if you have a rod like this and you wrap around a rope or a ribbon around it, then you say that it is a helix which is formed. So it, we say that DNA is a double stranded helical structure it is a polymer. What do we mean by polymer? Any such molecule which is formed by combining a lot of monomers. That means many small molecules unite together or get linked together to form a polymer. So it is also termed as polynucleotide because many small nucleotides join together to form a polynucleotide. The word poly means many. So polymer means many monomers. So that's how polymer. Similarly, polynucleotide means many nucleotides. So we will see what is a nucleotide and all those stuff. So here the monomer units are deoxyribonucleotides as I said. So each unit, so many similar units will join together to form the entire polymer. The length of DNA is determined by the number of nucleotides in it. So it is something like this. Let us suppose these are the nucleotides. So just I am just drawing boxes so that it is simpler for you to understand. So these are all nucleotides. So these are the monomer units. Now when these monomer units get joined to each other, what you get? You get a polymer. Now the more the number of monomers that you join or more the number of nucleotides you join, what happens? The length of this polymer keeps on increasing. So similarly here in this case, the length of DNA is determined by the number of nucleotides which are bound, bounded to each other. So as the number of nucleotides increases, the length of the DNA also increases. Now let us see what is RNA. It is ribonucleic acid and it is a single stranded structure. It's unlike DNA, you do not have both the strands, red and blue, you just have one of them. However, this is also a poly polymer that is a polynucleotide which is formed by several monomer units. And the monomer units in this case is ribonucleotides. Now we will talk about the structure a little later like here you might be seeing the words nucleobases and sugar phosphate so you might be wondering what are they. So we will discuss that a little later. So this is how the RNA. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.